Hey there, Jay Nicholas for the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm thinking pike and muskie. So I'm going to uh, tie for you in this video a 12-inch uh, a long articulated uh, pike muskie fly. This is what the beastie is going to look like. I'm going to cut now. Well, we're doing this shot to try to show you overall size of this fly. This is a 12-incher. It's an articulated shank fly, the back half, the front half. So we're going to try to refocus things here and get going on this fly, and it's going to come out just about like this. I call it a shad uh, pike musky fly, articulated shad pike musky fly. So let's get started. Uh, I have a uh, big game shank, 28 millimeter. This is a EP Vader brush. This is a shad color. This is a shrimp pink. This is the back part. Now I like to hold these brushes uh, in a hackle pyre. So I encourage you, as I do, to periodically pick these out. Some people are really good at twisting these wires to sever them, so I usually trim. Just keep in mind, these articulated pike and musky flies, they are intended to move, and this back half moves separately from the front half, and the back half so I'm really going to add some length to it. And I'm going to do that with some flat wing saddles. I've got a couple beautiful whites here. You're in the driver's seat deciding how long you want the overall length of this fly to be. The first uh, set of saddles, they're f the flat wing. They tend to be a little bit broader. And these are um, dyed black bugger saddles. Now, I don't want to create a lot of bulk here. I could. So I've got uh, white and black. I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab some flash. I've got my little station prep device here. I'm going to hold it in my mouth. I, had, I was holding little chunks of this flash taboo in my, uh, my mouth. I want, I've got a mixture here of polar flash and some flash taboo and I've got some magnum and I've got some holographic and I'm going with hints of silver. Got a few strands of black in there. So I'm going to lay those back. One, two, three turns, and then I'm going to fold this back on itself to lock it in. Got a lot of flash in this fly. I'm going to finish up the tail section, but these brushes uh, are really nice. They do not hold a lot of water. They, pr they present plenty of profile. They push a sufficient amount of water. And we're going to move on to the front part. And I'll, I'm going to show you, I'm probably going to speed it up. So here we go. This is uh, Senyo's intruder wire. You may use many materials. These are some uh, six millimeter. These are actually UV egg beads, Spirit River. They're really pretty cool. The firmness of the wire, and it just helps keep things in their place. This is a Kona six aught big game.
I like the gap of this six hot and I so so this is a nice big gap uh, not too long a hook Okay, kind of preen these hairs out of the way. So we've got, uh, got the forward part of the fly shaping up very nicely. I'm going to add some big fly fiber. I've got a lot of choices. I'm going to reach for the black and white with a red flashaboo material. And it's real crinkly down near the end and it's nice and straight out here. I want to utilize that crinkly part and make sure the length is going to be just right. And the, so the length is, is just about, if I tie it in here, right here. I could reverse tie this, but I am not going to. Because if I secure about a half an inch, Three-eighths. Put some super glue on there. That isn't going anywhere. I have a dark olive holographic here. And I want these to be right as long. But these are largely on top of the fly. I'm going to throw on a shrimp pink invader brush. I really enjoy tying these giants. It's a very, have a very physical interaction with the materials, the hooks. I mean, you've got to work these materials. You've yeah, and yes, you clamp your fly in the vise, and that's all. you're testing the limits of your vices and your threads. You're literally pushing things to the edge. I'm going to finish this with half inch eyes. I'm going to glue them on both sides. And then I'm going to add a little bit of UV cure, not a lot, just brushing on a little bit, just to hold that nice round shape. Uh, make sure I don't want to compress too much. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to be quiet because I'm going to speed this up. And what you're going to see is the speedy version. So here we go. Okay, so the point of all that, being this light, it's going to be right up there on top. Uh, yes, it's going to penetrate the surface. It's not going to float. I don't know if you can see, but th with these brushes, um, they've got very nice... The movement in these flies is amazing. So you strip this fly, and when you pause, this back part goes sideways. It's just... Oh, just crazy. Uh, so, so much movement. This light dusting of the flexible, uh, of UV cure holds the, holds the profile and instead of pressing it together, uh, it, it just keeps that shape. So I'm going to try it. So you see the profile here? 
And when you strip this and you pause it, it turns sideways. Or it goes that way. And uh, that drives the fish nuts. Drives me nuts too. I love the way these flies look in the water. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. You can get your materials at the caddisflyshop.com.